Hi everybody, welcome to Daisy, and in this video I'm going to show you how to install Daisy Expansion AI, uh, a Daisy PC mod that allows you to add AI NPCs to your server, like these um, these two chaps here. And you can have friendly AI, you can have enemy AI, um, you can have lots of different factions, um, you can have them patrolling on routes like this, you can have them guarding areas. I um, don't know where this fella's going, he's off for a walk. Um, like there's a chap in here who's just kind of guarding inside this maze. Well, oh, he's off He's off doing something. Um, and also there is a, a rather handy um, debug option as well, where you can play around and you can spawn in uh, AI and, uh, and run around with them and, and have fun with them as well. So, um, right, okay, so he's off probably to go and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, to go and kill somebody. Um, so let's um, let's exit out of here and let's dive in and show you what to do. Now, what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to install it on our local PC server. And I'm going to show you sort of how to configure it. Um, and then we'll uh, install it on a remote community server. I'm a big believer in if you're into adding mods to your servers, always start with the local server um, and I'll put a link in the description below this video about how to install a local server because it's much quicker to install things and test things on a local server than it is on a remote server and if you run into problems you can figure them out which means that when you install on a remote server and you do have problems you'll uh, more likely be able to sort them out so as with, as with most things to do with DayZ you want to get on over to the workshop and you want to subscribe to DayZ Expansion AI again I'll put links in the description below the video and then it has some dependencies. You want to make sure you're subscribed to CF Community Framework. I'm pretty sure you will be already. You want to subscribe to Dabs Framework. You want to subscribe to that. Daisy Expansion Core is what else you want to subscribe to. Um, and that's it. So what we're doing with Expansion AI, we're not ex installing lots and lots of bits of expansion. We're just choosing Expansion AI. Also remember that this is very much a alpha uh, mod and lots of things will be changing over time so it can be a bit janky at the <laughs> at the moment with the uh, way that the uh, AI run around and use their weapons and things like that but it's still it's still a lot of fun now I'll also put um, links in the description uh, uh, below this video to Sally Tesh's he's putting together quite a nice kind of wiki, wiki uh, on his github which has got some instructions on setting up expansion AI it's not all there yet but there's but there's quite a lot of stuff so once you are, um, let's just shut these down. Once you've subscribed to uh, all those bits we talked about, you want to fire up the Daisy launcher, and that will then download the mods to your local version of Daisy. And so, <coughs> excuse me. And so what we want to do next is we we'll want to uh, install these into our local server, um, and to find out where they are, just click on the three dots, open folder in Windows Explorer. And that will then open up your workshop folder and then all you need to do is copy the relevant mods from inside your workshop folder to your server folder so what do we have we wanted um, cf dabs framework expansion ai expansion uh, expansion core right click you'd copy those go up one go up another one and generally this will be where your server is go into your local server paste those bits into there as you can see i've already done it and then you'll need to copy the keys across you're probably very familiar with this at the moment so go into the keys folder inside the mod copy the key go into the keys folder in the server paste it in there and do the same for these so we copy that into the keys folder paste go into expansion AI keys copy back into the keys folder paste and then finally do the same with expansion core keys copy and then back into the keys folder and paste so then what we need to do is we make need to make sure that the that our local server starts with expansion ai so open up your windows bat file batch file the dot bat file that you use and here's mine so on the start line there 
um, you're looking for your mod section um, <coughs> and the order that you want to do them in that works for me is at CF, at Dabs Framework, at Daisy Expansion AI, at Daisy Expansion Core, and that works. Then after that, you can add in, for example, I've added in at Zombri Admin Tools, um, and I've added in VPP Admin Tools as well, and uh, Red Falcons Mosquito. But if you add in CF, Dabs Framework, Dabs, Dabs, Daisy Expansion AI, and Daisy Expansion Core to start off with, you'll find that um, you'll find that that should fire up nicely. Now, once you've done that, what you want to do is you'll want to double click on your batch file and make sure that it runs through once and that will generate the folders you need to then configure uh, expansion AI. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, what you'll find is once it's run through the first time, you can go into your config folder. Remember, this might be called settings. Or something else but it's the folder that has your daisy crash logs and um, your ADM files in there as well and you're looking for the expansion mod folder and if you go into here and then go into settings you'll see the AI settings.json so you want to open that up and this is really important this one so under admins this is where you put in your steam ID okay so put in your steam ID there and then you um, save and restart the server and that will then give you access to the debug menu you know the one, the one where i spawned in that um friendly ai so you press t and you bring up the debug menu that but you need to do you need to put that into there okay so now we've done that um and our server's running um expansion ai will be will be working on our server but but what does it do what does it do and the really important um file to look at is the ai patrol settings.json and where, where you'll find this is, if you go inside your server mission folder that you're running, and then go to expansion, then go to settings, and AI patrol settings, and edit that, this is the file. So there's kind of two types of spawning uh, triggers, if you like, for the AI. There's object patrols at the top, then you scroll down a bit, and there's ordinary patrols. So object patrols, these spawn in when the item spawns in that's under class name. So let's look at this first one. The first one is rec UH1Y. So you get this with a helicopter rec, won't you? Won't you? So whenever a helicopter event triggers, you know, as a, a survivor, you know, a player is getting closer to it, and it spawns in a, a UH1 rec, or the one underneath is the MI8, the Russian rec, this will spawn in a patrol. And in this case, it will spawn in a, a patrol uh, that's of the faction west of um, uh, AI that are using the bandit loadout. And the number, uh, well, it says minus three. So the, the, what that means is when it has a minus number, it's saying, look, pick a random number between minus three and one. Um, and that'll be the number that will spawn in. Is if, if you don't have the minus, it will spawn in exactly that number. Um, and then their behavior will be halt or alternate so this is how they move in now if you want to know what most of these things mean if you go to uh, Sally Tesh's uh, expansion AI uh, github he explains what the uh, syntax is behind all this stuff so you can kind of figure out figure out what it all means uh, but what is interesting about these object patrols is that these items that um, spawn in that trigger these patrols are normally controlled by events um, so what you may want to do is especially for the helicopters you may want to go into your helicopter events in your events the xml and remove the secondary um, ch child so you want to remove the infected so when a helicopter spawns in a crashed helicopter you don't want the infected to spawn in as well otherwise all that's going to happen is your ai bandits are just going to fight with the zombies and kill each other um, and maybe you and then you'll rock up and there'll be nobody there so I would probably suggest you take them away so if we look down we can see that this uh, patrol here that spawns in spawns in when a police car spawns in so but again you can have that same situation where the police car spawns in as part of the police wreck um, event that will spawn in zombie policemen as well who will then fight the AI so I would again remove the zombies um, unless that's an effect you want to go for What's also interesting is if you are spawning in any of these um, 
items as part of a uh, custom JSON, especially something like the Rec UH1, because you know we we create um, custom locations where maybe you want a helicopter wreck, a smoking helicopter wreck to to, to be there. Um, Expansion AI will see that wreck that you're spawning in via a custom JSON, and it will spawn in a patrol with it as well. So that's that's quite interesting. That so you have to watch out for that. So if you're using anything like a uh, a police car or a helicopter as part of a custom JSON, that will spawn in AI. But what that also means is that you can very easily create patrols. You can you, know, you could just copy and paste this uh, that bit there. And then you could make an uh, AI patrol spawn in with something you wanted. Um, so you, you could well say something like, okay, let's let's take a, a quite a unique item, say like the uh, the yellow helmet, the yellow damaged helmet, um, that I think only spawns on Livonia, couldn't it? But you could make it spawn in Chernerus in specific places. And you could say, wherever the helmet spawns in, I want a patrol of AI to spawn in with it to kind of defend it. And so you can can do things that way. So that's the object patrol. So let, let's go down further. So this, these are the normal patrols. Um, so these work in a very similar way. So this first patrol, faction is west, loadout file is the bandit loadout. So let's look at the back. Let's have a look at the loadout files actually while we're here. So in your uh, server, if you go into the config or the profile or the settings folder, it has different names. And then go into expansion mod and then go into loadouts you'll see all these different loadouts um, so let's open up the bandit loadout and basically this tells uh, the, the mod what clothes and what weapons a particular um, patrol should be wearing and the best thing to do is just just to go through and, and look at it and you'll kind of get an idea of what it what it's all about um, and so with the factions as well, there's several factions that you can use, and they all interact with each other in different ways. Um, and again, Sally Atesh's, um GitHub kind of explains this. You know, so West, they're friendly towards civilians and West. East faction friendly towards civilians. East civilians friendly towards any factions that are not hostile to them. Passive always friendly towards other until attacked. Guards always friendly towards other guards. Friendly towards other AI and players as long as they don't raise their weapons. So they have slightly different. Um, things that, that they will do um, again you've got number of AI so in this particular case this patrol will produce three AI their behavior is altern alternate what that means is if there's in this case three waypoints uh, the AI will go to they'll start at waypoint one go to waypoint two go to waypoint three then go back to two then go back to one then go to two three so they're kind of alternate in backwards and forwards their ordinary speed will be walking so they just wander between these points and their under threat speed is sprinting so when they detect an enemy they will then start running around can be looted one unlimited reload so you can change that so they've got lots of ammo and then you've got your um distances um for when they should be uh spawning in and that sort of stuff and the chance is whether that uh um patrol will actually spawn in on, on time um <coughs> sorry the chance of it actually spawning in and then you have the waypoints. Now, what you can do is, if you go into I Survive, you can put these coordinates in, and you can see where they are. They tend to be away from um, the big cities and big towns and villages because the problem that you have with uh, AI NPCs is that they're like fighting zombies. But as soon as they start firing their weapons, that attracts more zombies to them. So when you are creating custom patrols, and it is is as easy as you know copying a patrol. And then changing the coordinates when you do that just bear in mind the fact that these guys will start blasting away and even if you put suppressors on their weapons they're gonna attract a lot of zombies and they're not the cleverest things in the world so they're not going to know to climb on top of a car to avoid those zombies they're just going to get in a fight and they're probably going to get killed so really think about how you're going to use the ai now i kind of was a bit glib there about creating the coordinates um when you're creating the waypoints for them to follow um, you've got X, Y, and Z, which means that you've got um, latitude and longitude, and you've got altitude as well, which is the which is the Y function. So this means that in order to create these coordinates, you're really going to be using Daisy Editor. Um, so what you're going to be doing is firing up Daisy Editor, and the, the way that I've done it is you go into um, Daisy Editor, just pick a character like one of the survivors, drop them down where you want the patrol to start and use the same character in several locations where you want the patrol to go and then you just export it as a JSON and then you can copy and paste the coordinates over. Um, now 
I've looked at a few of the or a few of these patrols and the vanilla patrols that spawn in when you install AI uh, expansion AI, some of them aren't real. One of them's in the middle of the sea. <laughs> so you may want to go through and double check the coordinates for all of these. Also bear in mind that the way that the um, the way that the, the, the AI spawn in is they don't all sp they don't spawn in all the time. They they spawn in in a very similar way to the event spawn in, and that's controlled up here. So what this means is that if we look at maximum dis max uh, distance radius and minimum distance radius, so as you're wandering along, getting near to where one of these potential patrol points is, um, they won't spawn in uh, if you're closer than 400 meters away. Or you're more than a thousand meters away so you need to be between 400 meters to a thousand meters from this from a particular potential patrol and then they will spawn in if you then go further than 1100 meters away they will then despawn so that may mean that sometimes when you're testing especially it can be quite difficult to find out where the AI are <laughs> because they're wandering you know they haven't spawned in yet or they're wandering through a forest somewhere so bear that in mind as well but my rule of thumb is once you've installed it, if you can get the debug menu up, chances are everything else is working. So that really is the basics of installing AI, uh, expansion AI, and configuring it on your local server. So let, let's now quickly just cover uh, installing it on a remote server. So here we've got um, uh, FTP, uh, sorry, FileZilla, my FTP program. Um, and basically, we're going to do exactly what we did before. So. What you want to do is just find out where your daisy workshop folder is here it is with me and there's my remote server i've connected to it so remote server on the right um workshop on the on the on the left and then you just want to right click upload community framework dabs framework expansion ii expansion core as you can see i've already done it and then you'll want to open up the keys folder on your server and then within your keys folder oops, You'll want to um, add the keys from the particular. There we go. So by key, put that one up there. That one there. So you'd right-click, upload, and do that for all of the all of the the mods. So they end up here. Um, and then what you want to do is you'll want to go to your Nitrado server or your whatever server, and then we need to do the batch file bit, don't we? Um, now normally on um, on Nitrido servers and quite a lot of remotely hosted servers you don't have um, exact access to the batch file so what you need to do is you'll go in, need to go into the uh, settings and you'll probably find as you scroll down there will be an additional mods section like this and you need to make sure there we've got so at community framework semicolon dabs framework daisy expansion ai daisy expansion core and then in my case i've got zombie admin tools and vpp admin tools afterwards now you then save that and then you want to restart your server and that will then create the folders we were talking about in the part uh, in the past so so what that means you need then need to do is we need to go in and um, tell uh, the um, the settings on the server you know who we are so that we can use the debug mode and so you, what you'll want to do is there is you want to go into config like so go into expansion mod go into settings go into AI settings uh, edit it and then you won't see that but your one will probably be empty it will just have the square brackets but that's where we, inside your inverted commas or your quotation marks that's where you put your steam ID you then save that you restart the server and then you'll then have access to the debug mode so you press T and you'll be able to spawn um, um, be able to spawn um, AI in um, and then if you want to then change it further you can then go into your mission go into your Chernerus Plus and then go to expansion open that up go into settings and there's your AI patrol settings that you could view and edit and then you can edit it that like that way or you can do it by the file browser whichever way works best for you so there we go that my friends is how you install daisy expansion AI on your local server how to configure it you know we've done some basic configuration how to access the debug mode how to install on your remote server 
Hopefully you find that useful. If you have, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And I will, of course, see you again soon.